Welcome back to JNK Fun Tips. <clears throat> this is Casey, my lovely wife, and Jeremy. Today we're doing the potato soup, which is amazing. She makes it so good. <clears throat> Her family requests it every time they have a get together. So we're going to kind of go through it as we go and just go from there. Cutting them, first you want to um, skin them, and then you want to slice them into little pieces. I did about a quarter inch thick. You can do thinner or thicker. And then um, I try to do different size pieces because once the soup, the potatoes off and they kind of cook down, and when I'm eating the soup, I kind of would like to have bigger chunks of potato in there. And so um, I kind of do different sizes with the potatoes when I chop them up. So it's basically whatever you prefer. So yeah, I have some smaller pieces in there too. But once you get the potatoes chopped up and the celery as well chopped up, um, you want to throw that in there in the pot and add just enough water to cover the potatoes. So I can show you. That's all you want. See, so it looks like that. Turn it on boil. Again, as always, wash your hands before you cook. Be sanitary. Yeah. I was kind of hoping that would be one of the. Well, I was kind of hoping that'd be one of the better oh, outcomes shit. from the whole COVID breakout. I forget that I need a measure. So for the measuring part. I was kind of hoping that would be one of the benefits from the whole COVID thing. When everyone becomes more. Hygienic, so, be clean. Oh no! But it's Once not. Once it's over, everybody goes back to their. I still see people in the bathrooms at donation centers that are donating. That go on, go to the bathroom, wash your hands, and then walk out. One tablespoon. So whenever I see that, I yell out of the bathroom, wash your hands, and everyone looks at the person. And then they go back in the bathroom, which is the outcome that I want. Sure you want to phrase it that way? Alright, so I did one tablespoon. You sure you want to phrase it that way, sweetie? I'm gonna throw the celery in there. What? I'm gonna come up a little more. Yeah. Alright. Just for that I'm actually gonna throw them in there the next time. So do you want them actually thinner that way or in smaller chunks? Thinner. Thinner, the faster it cooks. There's only a few of them like that. Okay. 
And when I was getting towards the end. Good now. I think you're gonna like it, but something out of the oven. Well, I was gonna push in the oven, I got hands on there. See, this is why I don't help. There. You yelled at me. You yelled at me when I try to help, and that's what happens. So now, once Flip you put... It. Doing the video for you, sweetie. Doing it for me? I guess it's just. Doing it for the vine. I still don't know what the hell that means. The vine means uh, do it for the clip. It's Does anyone know what the vine, do it for the vine means? Babe, I'm trying to tell you. Okay, tell me. It's do it for the clip, do it for the movie, do it for the, do it for the video. Do it for, that's what the vine means. It's a short clip. Oh, yeah. And people right. being stupid. Okay. That's what it Okay. You go to YouTube Vines and you and it'll pop up with a bunch of dumb videos of people basically ridiculous in these videos. That's what it does. That's yeah. why people say do it for the vine so then they can get on YouTube and try I to be famous for looking stupid. And that the response is always, I don't wanna do it. Do it for the vine. I don't wanna do it. I I don't wanna do it. Do yeah, do it for the vine was back in like 2014, 2012. It was so huge though. Put that back in the oven. It really is. You're kind of
so it's saying Q3. Mm hmm. The magic suit too. The what? The magic suit. The magic suit. Yeah, when you get cancer. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's see another one. my life was um, when I had cancer when I was 17 actually I was 18 at the time because it had relapsed when I was when I had turned 18 came back um, basically when my leukemia had relapsed it had changed into a different type of leukemia that they did not test for and so they were treating me with the for the other type of leukemia that I had had previously and so because of that, the chemo was actually killing me. And so they had, and I wasn't able to eat anything because I had sores all the way down my throat. I couldn't swallow anything. I was on a morphine pump. And I was out of it for at least two weeks. And I came back and um, my mom had told me, um, hey, you need to eat something. The doctors are saying that your medicine's not going to work. The chemo's not going to work if you don't eat anything. And so... My mom had made her potato soup, and at the only at the time, it's the only thing my body was able to to keep down. It's the only thing I had a craving for, and so they said, "Well, it's working." So my mom had just made me a, a bunch of potato soup, and within that week, I had gained 15 pounds, 
the doctors came in one morning for their rounds and they look at my mom they said whatever you're doing keep doing it my mom goes it's the soup <laughs> so the soup literally saved my life it helped me put on the weight that i needed to continue with the chemo and go on with the bone marrow transplant that i was scheduled to get so your brother right yep my little brother was my my donor nice um, yeah, so potato soup saved your life, and lasagna saved mine. Who yeah. can save your life? Yeah, it was, and my mom even made this for me in the hospital, because I was, you know, in and out of the hospital for a good two years, and so they had on the second floor, I was either on the second or the third floor. The second floor was, uh, they had what was called the teen room. And it was a room, they had an, uh, a stove, an oven, refrigerator, and then, you know, it was basically for people that wanted to get out of their hospital room and spend time with their family. And so my mom would go in there, our, the refrigerator was filled with all of our stuff. Instead of labeling every little thing, we just labeled the whole entire refrigerator ours. <laughs> I love bacon stuff. And um, my mom was making this one day. And people kept popping their heads in the room. Like, oh, that smells so good. <laughs> Excuse me, dogs. Yeah, we gotta go job. Bacon's really done. It's gonna be very crumbly. Good. Yeah, that's how it's gonna be. Yep. When you make your bacon, you want it. We have like really thick bacon, but when you make it, you want it to crumble. Basically. Um, like bacon bits. Yeah. Just think of bacon bits whenever you make the bacon for the soup. You want it like that. So little tiny pieces once you crumble it up. Yes, and then just let it cool. For... Yep. Because once the bacon gets in the soup, it's going to soften up a little bit. We put that in last, though. Once we put in the roux at the end, we'll put the bacon in last with the cheese. Yep. And then kind of stir it in there. So now the potatoes, I'm looking at here, the potatoes are all starting to soften now. You know that it's completely soft when you... I always try to take the biggest potato and break it. If that breaks, then typically it's done. But do you do a little test run or? No, I mean it's good. It's right. it's good. Um, show the people. Show. Uh, actually, this one needs to cook a little bit longer. But see, this one's not breaking. They want to. Usually, they want to break pretty easy. But that one did break actually. I'll let it cook a little bit longer because you can tell that the middle's not completely done. Right. Let them cook a little bit longer till it, you know, simmers down. So, uh, right now I'm just kind of getting an idea on measuring. It's not, I'm not 100% sure. So, I'll just do this and then that's what I'm kind of writing down. If I have to add more, I'll do it. Alright. Yeah, because you rarely use measuring cups. So I got like, ever. one teaspoon of salt, <clears throat> teaspoon of black pepper. You do one and a half teaspoons of black pepper. Right. Hmm. We're kind of matching pajama bottles. Yeah. You have black, red, and white, and so do I. Hey, my mom got me. Here's a candy cane zone, mine are dead cool. Here's a better. Oh, you got them for me. Like, two years ago and I wasn't able to wear them until recently. Oh, better. Put my pepper in there.
cheap Ziploc bag sealer if you don't have one. Ours is up there. Easy to open it all the way up. And you close it all the way up to the corner here, like a finger width. Open it up like that. And you suck it up. Now it's vacuum sealed. You definitely don't need to add any more pepper to this. <laughs> Dude, you have an accident? Yeah, I put too much in there. Oh, that's all right. How about you, sweetie? I can always... I like um, pepper in it. Oh, you need to put this on a plate. Yep. Plate's over here. Bacon's gonna look like that. It's gonna be kind of greasy, so you wanna get as much as you can off of it. Just kind of pat it down with another paper towel. So far, it looks like that. So the row, you want to make it so it looks like pancake mix, basically. This is what's going to thicken the soup. Yep. This is the most important part. Because, uh, when I first made this soup, this is where I screwed up. I added the roux. You're going to want to shut the heat off once the potatoes are softened. Um, shut the heat off. Have the roux mixed up. You want, you want no lumps in there. Grab the milk. Yep. I'm a fetcher. I fetch things. Okay, for the milk. Is there a full gallon? About a full gallon. You gonna put a full gallon in there? No, now? I'm talking to myself. <laughs>
Yeah, I'll let Alaska have one. Alright. <coughs> yeah, that's about right. It's, it's closer to, that's like a half gallon almost exactly. And then grab me some cheese. Six like, slices. Something like that, yeah. This was the ingredient that I didn't know she put in there until I helped her make it for the first time. She said, grab the cheese out of the fridge. And like, what are you talking about? Who puts cheese in soup? Besides cheese soup. Well, that, that's different. So, we use Kraft Singles just because it melts a lot easier. But I've always used. So, now while it's uh, before it heats up again, after you put the milk in, you're going to dump your roux in there. In. You can put the cheese in too, and then this is all gonna melt together. And then it's gonna take a second for it to thicken, but once it heats up, it yeah. gets really hot. It's it's like making gravy. You know, you gotta let it basically boil, and then once it gets hot, then it will start to thicken. This is the soup gravy. Next, don't get it. You don't get a treat, all right? I already gave you. I already gave you some ham. You don't get another treat. Not for another week or month. <gasps> Baba. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. You got that. Go, Jeremy. Sorry. Let's put the wrapper in the, in the soup. <laughs> We're gonna put the cheese off to the side. I had to go on. <laughs> yeah. It's not the first time something like that's happened. Oh God, like the time you crack the egg, dump the egg, put the shell in the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I dumped the egg in the trash, and then I put the shell in the bowl to mix it. Hey, it would've been really good. You never know. You don't know until you try it, sweetie. It's like when they do them um, funny cooking tutorials where they're just like being stupid and they go... Bloopers? Yeah, and they go, okay, now two eggs. They throw the whole entire egg in there without cracking it or anything. Yeah. Say four bananas, throw the whole banana in there with yeah. <laughs> the peel and everything. I'm just following the directions here. <laughs> See it's how it all turns out. Yeah. I hope this works. It's going to be amazing like always. As I stated before, I've never had a bad batch of her soup, so. Usually towards the end, I usually add a little bit more because like once I get to this part here, once I get the cheese in there and then the, the roux in there, and once it gets to, uh, once everything starts to thicken, then I'll do a little taste test. My little ratatouille taste test. <laughs> And then, um, yeah, go from there. If I like it, yep. usually, usually I kind of add a little more, you know, chicken flavoring or onion. So I do have to say we typically I add onion salt. We only had onion powder, which is um, essentially the same thing. Yeah, except you gotta use more powder though. So um, typically you want to use salt bowl instead of the powder. That's yep. it. You just have to use, you don't have to use as much. <clears throat> yeah, like I said, she's never had a bad batch. There's one actually that, that uh, she discovered in my, when she moved in here, she made a batch for me, or for us, and she discovered that the flour was expired oh, after she yeah. had made it already. I thought it was fine. So, you know when flour is bad, when all you can taste is flour. 
<laughs> when you cook, whatever you cook. No matter what you cook, all you taste is that nasty flour taste. And and I remember taking a bite, and I and I did the taste test thing, and then it was towards the end. I was like, all right, I put too much flour in here. I put too much roux in here. This doesn't taste right. More seasoning, more seasoning. Try to get rid of that taste. Flour taste. Yep. I tried it again. I'm like, I t I still taste flour. I've been putting so much seasoning in here. What in the world? And then I'm like, all right, what's wrong with the flour? I go look at the flour, realize it's four years old. It wasn't expired. four years old. Yes, it was. Half the stuff, okay, so I moved in here in 2017. Stuff, stuff that was here in the cupboard was from 2013, 2014. Stuff doesn't expire, all right? <laughs> in my head, it does not expire. Only when it molds. No. When it waves at you, then it's expired. When it gets up and walks away <laughs> and says, put me in the damn trash. <laughs> no, when it waves hi, Jeremy, and talks to me, then I'll throw it away. But until that point, I'm going to eat it. Yes, eat it. Yeah. You make me... She made that batch. I ate the whole thing. Oh god, no, I think I dumped it out. I made, no, I, I made I ate it, remember? You did? Yeah, I had it for lunch at work. Oh god. Just add a little bit more pepper to it. God. Yeah, this one, I can already tell that I put too much pepper in this one, so like, you definitely don't have to add pepper. Yeah. You tried to throw it out, but I wouldn't let you. And I said, it's fine, I'll add for lunch. Okay. Once you have the room mixed up, before you dump it in, you're going to turn the heat back on. And as you're dumping the roux in there, you want to mix as well. It's kind of like making gravy. So as it's heating up, it's going to start to thicken. So you just want to keep stirring that, keep stirring that, get that roux mixed in there. And it's going to take a little bit, but you're going to want to have that heat um, turned up. Um, I usually do my medium, but if you want to get done faster, you got to keep an eye on it. You can turn it up high. Once it starts to thicken, you turn it way down lower, and then it thickens really quick from there. Once it's thick, then I usually do my taste test, if I have to add more seasonings or not. Um, yeah, and when it's all done, it's gonna be looking like... It's a like that. finished product right there. You can always add chives to the top of it and some more bacon bits as well if you like. But that's it. Yummy yummy. Yay. In my tummy. And that is a thank you to this beautiful woman over here who's walking away from me. <laughs> thank you again. It's Jeremy and Casey. As always, like and subscribe, and have a great night. Thank you very much. Did we ever finish our movie? You could do like me. No, we didn't. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> so when you hit the record button, does it stop and start another one then? What? When you hit the record button, does it stop and start another one?